Hello and welcome to Economic Trend on Rock City 101.9 FM, a program that gives you the latest news about brands, businesses and economic trend in Nigeria. My name is Olola De Soyaolu. <laughs> Alright, starting with the very first story, European Union says it will no longer increase its financial assistance to Nigeria. EU ambassador to Nigeria and ECOWAS, Mitchell Arian, who announces these, contends that Nigeria is not a poor country. Arian speaking at a distinguished lecture organized by the IBB Gulf Club in Abuja, says that EU believes that Nigeria has enough resources to finance its development requirement. The diplomat puts the official development assistance of the EU to Nigeria yearly at $2.5 billion, which according to him is equivalent to 10% of Nigeria's annual budget of $24 billion. He, however, says that EU will increase its support for institutional, political and economic development, including more political dialogue, technical assistance, capacity building, training and transfer of technology. Oh. The production of rice in Nigeria has risen to 5.8 million metric tons yearly as more Nigerians join in the production of the staple food. The production figure, according to the Nigerian Farmers Association, rose from 5.5 million metric tons in 2015 to 5.8 million tons this year. In 2015, the association says that Nigeria spent 1 billion naira daily on rice. The association's president, Alhaji Aminu Gurunyo, says the production is still below 7.9 million metric tons consumed by Nigerians yearly, leaving a shortfall of 2.1 million metric tons to be met for importation. Gurunyo explains that the association had signed a memorandum of understanding with the Nigerian Customs Service to stop further smuggling of rice into the country. <laughs> Nigeria's crude oil proven reserve is expected to dry up in the next 25 to 30 years. Petroleum Resources Minister of State Dr. Ibe Kachiku, who made this known, says that that is why the presidency is now giving more attention to Nigeria's vast natural gas reserve, which could last about 60 years. Kachiku speaking in Abuja at the 5th Terrenial Delegate Conference of the Petroleum and Natural Gas Senior Staff Association of Nigeria, Pengerson, describes natural gas as the new horizon of opportunity and the future of Nigeria. The minister says it foresees an end to the flaring of natural gas by oil-producing companies in the country in the next three years. He also dismisses reports that Worry, Port Harcourt and Kaduna refineries had been sold or concessioned, explaining that what the Nigerian National Petroleum Corporation is doing now is arranging a financial arrangement to develop and upgrade the four refineries. <laughs> Ogun State Government has requested for the control of federal roads in the state. Works and Infrastructure Commissioner Olamile Kwa Debite says the state government had written to the Federal Ministry of Works to release federal road network in the state to the state government. Major federal roads in the state include most of the stretch of the Lagos Ibado Expressway, Lagos Abeokuta Expressway, the Shagamu Ore Expressway, Otai Diroko Expressway, and Ikurudu Shagamu Expressway. A dignity of false insinuation in some quarters that Amosu administration is more interested in reconstructing federal roads in the state at the expense of state roads. The commissioner explains that in choosing roads to be reconstructed, the state government always gave priority to those regarded as major or spine roads that will bring more benefit to the state. Adeguita also assures that all the major roads being constructed by the Amosu administration has, has a lifespan of 30 years. <laughs> Stakeholders have reached an agreement to take necessary measures in Apapa, Lagos to ensure the takeoff of the reconstruction of Wharf Road leading to the nation's major port on July 7. They agreed on several issues at a meeting held at the office complex of the Federal Ministry of Power, where it's now in headquarters in Lagos. 
Those in attendance include representatives of traffic regulatory and traffic management agencies, law enforcement agencies, transport unions, petroleum product unions, port terminal operators, and the Nigerian Port Authority MPA. Others are telecommunication service providers. The APAPA local government, representatives of Federal Ministry of Power, Works and Housing, AG Dangote Construction Company Limited, contractors on the project, among others. The stakeholders, rising from the meeting, presented a communique read by Mr. Godwin A.K., Federal Controller Works, Lagos, and consultant of AG Dangote Construction Company Limited, Mr. Kayode Okwefa. They agreed that the Federal Ministry of Power, Works, and Housing, and MPA should collaborate to repair all bad roads and diversion routes, including Tinkan Island Road, Creek Road, and Oshudi Apapa Expressway, which will receive heavy traffic. <laughs> Nigeria Hotel Association, NHA, has raised concerns over inflated electricity tariffs issued to hoteliers across the country by various discos. The president of the association, Mr. Larry Awoshei, appeals to the federal government for intervention. He said that such intervention will enable them to stay in business, be more focused to be able to compete favorably with modern hotels across the world. Awoshei said that hoteliers paid over 80% of the revenue generated a month in the distinct hotels as electricity bill. He said that the development was encouraging and that most operators considered opting out of the business. He said that rather than constantly increasing the power tariff, government should upgrade the quality of power supply. The association, according to him, have written countless times to the various discos, state governors, presidency and Nigerian Electricity Regulatory Commission, NERC, all to no avail. <coughs> Nigerian Labor Congress, NLC, has asked the federal government to review its tax policies. The existing tax policies, according to the Congress, favors wealthy Nigerians and corporate organizations over workers. The NLC president, Mr. Ayuba Waba, who made the call while speaking in Abuja as a gathering of labor union leaders over the weekend, says the government never fails to tax public and civil servants. Waba, however, says government often, overlook, often overlooks high net worth individuals and corporate organizations who engage in illicit financial transactions to escape paying correct taxes. The NLC president also noted that the Panama Papers League has exposed the manner in which tax resources are being diverted away from the Nigerian state towards tax havens and urged the government to do something about it. <coughs> Nigeria exported goods worth 48.70 trillion naira to Europe, Asia, America, Africa and Oceania in the last four years. Analysis of the data sourced from the National Bureau of Statistics, NBS, showed that Nigeria had been exporting more goods to Europe, Asia and America, more than she exported to other African countries from 2013 to 2014. The data showed that Europe was Nigeria's number one destination for exports, with exports to the continent hitting 18.84 trillion naira in the last four years. The European destinations for Nigerian exports are Germany, the United Kingdom, the Netherlands, Italy, France, and Spain. The, however, exports to Europe, however, exports to Europe have been on a downward slide since it peaked in 2013 at 6.07 trillion naira, dropping to 3.05 trillion naira in 2016. The second highest value for exports recorded by Nigeria within a period was from Asia as the country exported goods worth 11.54 trillion naira to the continent in four years. Exports to the Asian countries of Japan, India and China recorded highest value in 2014 at 4.05 trillion naira from 2.06 trillion naira recorded the previous year, dropping to 2.53 trillion naira in 2016. Further analysis showed that the total exports to America exceeded the total exports to African countries within the period under review. Exports to the United States of America, Canada, and Brazil hit 8.09 trillion naira 
in the four year period. <laughs> Federal Ministry of Water Resources says it will require no less than 32 billion naira to meet the target of 100,000 hectares of irrigated agriculture in the 2017 budget. The Director, Irrigation and Drainage in the Ministry said the wells are shortfall already in the 2017 budget for irrigation purposes. According to him, the shortfall is one of the challenges that may affect the implementation of all projects listed in the Ministry's strategic plan. Ophia said the Ministry was assessing the cash flows and the specific amounts required to develop additional actors to avoid the mistakes of the previous administrations. <laughs> Africa's richest man, Alhaji Aliko Dangote, says he is having a sleepless night over the growing population of jobless Nigerian youth. Dangote expresses the concern in Lagos on the sideline of his meeting with business leaders and chief executive officers of companies from Nigeria and Kenya. He is, however, worried over the green unemployment and poverty, especially in the north, where limitless procreation prevails. The business mogul, who is the chairman of the Dangote industry, says the situation worried him more than whether his business makes profit or not. According to Dangote, frustration always sets in when youth are jobless, adding that it is partly responsible for the emergence of Boguaram. To Dangote, it is the collective responsibility of both the government to create new jobs to address the restiveness and agitations in the country. Uh. All right, those are the economic stories trending in Nigeria. Of course, to keep updated with us, know more about the stories, join us again on Monday for another episode or an economic trend on your Dallas station. Rock City 101.9 FM. Happy weekend to everyone out there. Stay out of trouble. My name is Olola Desoyan Lusain. Bye bye.